Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Jacob, and in this video, we are going to make a whole entire website. Yep, that's right. We are going to use this tool called Hugo, which is a static site generator. What that means is you write the content, you run a command, it generates the whole entire website, and you upload that. And then once it's on the server, it doesn't change until you upload new content. You can have JavaScript in it still, but nothing on the server side like Node.js or PHP. These are these websites are nice because while well, it's static content, so it's very easy to work with, but also every time you want to change something, you have to go through the whole upload process. So that's that's a good solution for some people, and you know, obviously other websites use very uh, not static content, for example, Google. Anyways, before you continue in this video, make sure you have Hugo installed. So you can get that from their releases uh, page on their GitHub. They have releases for, well, basically all the major platforms, Windows, BSD, Mac OS, and Linux. Of course, I'm on Linux, and I have already installed it from my package manager. I can show you by saying Hugo version. I am running version 0.20.7, which is the latest release as of the recording of this video. So now that you have Hugo installed, let's get started. I'm in my projects directory right now, and in order to make a new Hugo project, it's actually quite easy. You s just type Hugo new site, and then we'll name the site. I'm going to say example. Hugo site. There, I just made a whole entire website. Well, not exactly, but let's just continue on. If I switch over to the directory that Hugo created for me and see what's in here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six directories, all of which are empty. I know because, well, I've used Hugo before. And then we have this config.toml file. That's our configuration file. If I go in and edit that, just to see what's in there, it's it's not much. It's three lines that is basically filler. None of that information is very useful to us at the moment. So with Hugo, it's very easy to, say, make a blog. So that's what I'm going to use as an example for this tutorial where we'll, we'll make a blog. In order to make a new post, you type something like Hugo new post slash and then the file name of your post. So I'm going to say first post.md. That stands for markdown. I'm not going to be writing HTML files in this video. This is a markdown file that Hugo will compile into HTML for us. Now, this is just an example if I was writing a blog, whereas you could change this. I mean, really, the only thing that would change if you were making any other kind of website is right here, post. I'm just calling it a blog, so we make posts. You could make pages or products or whatever. Anyways, there we go. We have created our new post. It actually created it under a content directory, and then post slash first post dot md. So let's see what Hugo gave us. So I'll edit that by saying vim content post first post.md and again it's really not much this is all metadata everything in between these plus signs and after this we can type our markdown code so i'm just going to say um, this this is a header it begins with a hash so it's a header i'm going to say um, hello welcome to my new blog please come back some other other time when I've written something, something worth your time. Thanks. And there we go. There's our first post. Hugo has a built-in server. That's really convenient. So we can start our website to preview it, see what's going on by saying Hugo server. And then it gives us this link. If I click on this link, I get this page which happens to have nothing in it the reason for that is hugo needs some 
sort of structure to work with. Right now, all I've given it is a single post. It doesn't really know what to do with it. So I'm going to, I mean, we could write our own theme, but I'm going to download a theme from the Hugo Themes site. They have a whole site dedicated to themes for Hugo, and I'm going to download this one called Cactus. So if we go to their GitHub page, and I want to get the URL for this, copy that. I'll stop our server, and I'm going to say git add sub mod. Oh, wait a second. This is not a git repo. I have git installed, so I, all I have to do is say git init. OK, now we can do this. We say git add sub module. Paste in that URL to our theme. And where do I want to clone this to? I want it to be in our themes directory. And I'll call it cactus, because that's the name of the theme. That makes sense. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, what am I doing? I need to say git submodule add. Submodule add. There we go. And once that's done, we can say Hugo server again and see if we see a difference. Nope. Of course, we have to tell Hugo to use our theme. And we could do a whole bunch of stuff in the configuration file to get this theme working properly. But actually, this theme and most of the other Hugo themes contain an example site that I'm just going to copy the configuration from. So to do that, I'll say copy from themes cactus example site is the name of the directory and copy everything from there to right here and copy everything is what that flag means pretty much now if I list out what we have it looks pretty much the same but if I go into say our configuration file we have a whole bunch of new information in here and this is really easy to customize. So a uh, couple of necessary changes is changing the themes directory to themes, because that's our themes directory. And our theme name is cactus. And I'm going to change a couple other pieces of information, such as what's the title of our website. I'm going to call it my example Hugo website. Um, we don't need comments here. My name is Jacob. Um, my website this is my website, yeah, and bio for the author, how about I make YouTube videos about web development, I can type correctly, my Twitter is geek underscore launch, you get the idea, there's a whole bunch of other options that you can configure in here, I'm just going to leave the rest of them as they are. So I'll write and quit this, now if I say Hugo server, hopefully it'll work. And what do you know, it did. We get, this is pretty much the title page, it's, it's very nondescript, but it's a simple theme to demonstrate how this works. And they even included a bunch of demo posts for us, which is really nice of them. However, I don't see our post in here, and I don't want any of these posts because these are just example posts. They're pretty pointless to have in an actual blog. So let's head over to our post directory and see what is going on. So I'm going to go over to content post and see what's in here. So we have five files, creating a new theme, first post, and a couple of others. I'm going to remove all of them except our first post. Um, how does this work? I'm going to remove all of them except our first post. There we go. And that, whoops. Hugo server. And that, well, that's half of what we want. We're not still not getting our first post in there. And the reason for that is 
this right here. Draft is true. It thinks it's a draft, so it's not rendering it on our official site. Now, there are two ways to fix this. We could change this draft equals false, or we could say Hugo undraft content post first post. Now, if we say Hugo server, finally, we get this first post, and here we go. It says, hello, welcome to my new blog. Everything that we said in the first post, perfect. All right, now I'm not going to go through configuring this whole entire theme because that would take a really long time. And for the most part, it's simple. The Hugo docs are actually really well written. So you can go over to their website, read their documentation. It's really easy to understand. You should be able to figure out everything. However, this website is not online. That's our problem right now. It's running on localhost, which means this computer. No one else can access this. But I want to make this website public. So we are kind of in a pickle, except GitHub comes to the rescue. GitHub is a great website. Uh, GitHub.com. Go and make an account now because you're going to need it for the next step. GitHub is a pretty great website where you can host your GitHub where you can host your Git repositories and they also provide this nifty feature called GitHub Pages where they will host a static website for you. Now, I'm not going to make um, the GitHub Pages site for my organization which is called Geek Launch here. Um, it's going to be a project page, so it'll be geeklaunch.github.io is going to be the URL slash whatever I type here, which is example Hugo site. This is an, an example Hugo site. Okay, I'm making a new repository. Once you create your GitHub account, you'll see a big green button like create new repository or something like that. Click that, you'll get to this page, fill in the information, click create repository, make sure it's set to public, and then you'll get this page. So I want this URL right here. And since this is already a git repository, I'll say git remote add origin and paste in that. There we go. Now we will be able to push this website out to GitHub where they will host the pages site for us. So to get started, I'm going to say get status, see what we have, get add all, and get commit dash m initial commit commit. No one have a typo in a commit message. That would be absolutely terrible. Nobody does that, right? Right? Get push origin master. Got to enter my password for my SSH key. And as that's working, there we go. Now if I come over here and refresh, we have all our files in here. Now if I come over to our settings, this is where we can set up our GitHub pages. Right here, GitHub pages is designed to host your personal organizational blah, 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 blah. We just are worried about the source. Where is it going to host the web, like what files is it going to use to and display on the website. Right now it's set to none. We don't have GitHub pages set up. And we have a few options here. None, which is not what we want. We can use the master branch, which we have, or the master branch docs folder. Now the thing is, we don't want to use the master branch because if I come over here to um, the, the root of the master branch, this, this is not a website. This is a Hugo project. We don't have an index.html. We don't have posts. We, I'm, well, it's a Hugo project, so we do have posts, but we don't have the what would make this an actual website. This is a Hugo project. So I want to select this one right here. Um, but as I just said, we don't actually have a website here. This is a Hugo project. We need to make a website. Luckily, Hugo provides a utility for us to make that. It's, it's, it's called Hugo. Literally, that's, that's how you generate the website. Hugo. It, there, it, it just generated our website. So if I 
see what we have now, we have another directory called public. Um, that's obviously not a docs directory, um, which is what we would use here, the, a docs folder. Unfortunately, GitHub doesn't give us the option to use anything other than the docs folder, so what I'm going to do is change where Hugo generates the website to, and we set that in the config file, of course, so vim config, and the key is um, publish, dir, make sure that's capital D, I think that's important, um, <laughs> docs. So that's, that's the setting we need. And so let's generate this again, Hugo. There we go. List what we have. Now we have this docs folder and we don't need this public folder, Blech, this public folder. So I'm going to remove that. All gone. Get status, see what we have. Get add all, okay. And let's say git po wait a second, I mean git commit and we'll say rendered website and we'll say git push enter my password. Wonderful. Now let's come over here, see what we have. We have our docs folder, beautiful. Refresh this, we can select the docs folder, we'll save that. And it says your site is ready to be published at this URL. So I'll open that up. Uh-oh, this is unexpected. Actually, not really, I knew that was gonna happen the whole time. The reason is, This right here, it thinks that we're not at, or it thinks we're at example.org, not at github.com, sorry. So, https geek launch launch.github.io slash, remember the slash, we have to then say example Hugo site. That is our URL. That will make this correct. So then we'll generate our site again and say git status, see what's wrong, or see what's up. Not wrong, not wrong. Git add all, git commit, correct site URL, like that. Git push, enter my password. Wonderful. Open this again. Well, I suppose we're going to have to wait a little bit for changes to propagate. And there we go. This website is literally online right now. You can go ahead and, no, I'm telling you right now, pause the video and go to this URL. I'll have a link in the description. It is a live website and it works. So whenever you want to modify this website, all you have to do is make changes on your local machine, push them up to GitHub, and they'll be there in, well, less than, what was that, five, 10 seconds? And it's all for free. How cool is that? Anyways, guys, there you go. That is how you make a fully fledged website and get it online for free, all in one video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something from it. Hugo is an amazing tool. I'm actually using it on a project right now. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Hope you learned something from it. My name is Jacob. Don't forget to subscribe and have a good one.